Hello everybody and welcome to the final video for our Systems of Linear Equations unit. Today we're going to look at types of systems uh, of linear equations. The first thing we should talk about is just how many different ways can two lines uh, interact with each other. I want you to think about that for a second. Well, people always think of, well, the one way is that they can intersect. All right, so I'm just drawing my intersecting intersecting lines. Now, if your lines intersect, or if your system intersects, then we know, because we've been dealing with it, you're going to have one solution. Now, what I want to do is also, let's think about the characteristics um, of these lines if they're going to intersect. So, consider the slopes of these two lines. How would, what would the slopes be when you relate them to each other? Well, we don't know the numbers, but we do know that the slopes would be different. So, the slope of the first line would be different than the slope of the second line. The intercepts, the y-intercepts. Well, if I drew in really quickly a, uh, a coordinate plane, you can see that the y-intercepts are also different. So if you have intersecting lines, you're going to have different slopes and different y-intercepts. Sorry, that should be a 2. We're going to use that information a little, uh, little later on. Now another way that two lines can uh, intersect with, or sorry, can interact with each other, is they can be parallel. Now if they're parallel, the lines will never intersect. And like we talked about in class, if they never intersect, that means there's going to be zero solutions. Now again, I want to talk about the characteristics of these lines. Uh, maybe I should throw in my y, uh, sorry, my x and y axes. So I want to consider the slopes. Do you remember how the slopes of parallel lines relate to each other? They're equal. So the slope of the first line will be equal to the slope of the second line. What about their y-intercepts? Well, you can see by checking out my x and y axes that my y-intercepts are going to be different. This one would be, end up being somewhere up there. So my y-intercepts would still be different in this case. All right. Now, can you think of one more way that these two lines could interact? So intersecting and parallel, most people get. But it's that third style that it's kind of sometimes confusing. The third style is when the lines actually occupy the same space and uh, they coincide. So meaning I have one line, and maybe I'll use another color, and then I have a second line that's sitting in the exact same spot. So it really just looks like one line, but there is two different lines there. And maybe I'll use green to draw my axes. We were looking at that before. Okay, let's let's think about this now. So we know that when lines intersect, they have one uh, they have one solution because they have one intersection point. Well, in this third case, everywhere on the line would be an intersection point. So we have all we have. Anytime you have a point on one line, it's going to be on the other line as well. Meaning there's going to be an infinite amount of solutions in this case where they coincide. Now let's consider the characteristics. Well, if they're the same line, really, again, your slopes are going to be equal. And if they're the same line, really, the y-intercepts are going to be equal as well. And you can kind of see that in my drawing, that uh, my y-intercept would be the same for both that red and blue line. All right, so this is the three types of systems that you can come across. And um, depending on their slopes and their y-intercepts, that's how you'll know which type of system you have. So if you have different slopes, right away you know of intersecting lines. That's what we've been working with mostly. But if you have, the, if you have equal slopes, that throws a big, bit of a wrinkle into it. If you have equal slopes, you know you either have zero solutions or you have infinite amount of solutions. And we have to go to that y-intercept as a tie break. If the y-intercepts are different, that means they're parallel, uh, so zero solutions. If the y-intercepts are equal, that means then we're going to have infinite amount of solutions. So this little chart, you're, you're going to want to commit these characteristics to memory because that's going to help you out. Um, I also want to look at a solutions flow chart. So basically what I just described at the end of the last slide, like how to determine what type you have, um, here's a little flow chart that can help you do that. So the first thing you want to do is find the slopes. If they're different right away, you know it's one solution that they intersect, you're done with that question. Or if... Uh, Truly, you can then go ahead and solve that. So you know you have the um, intersecting system. We know that we can solve for that answer, so we'd go ahead and do that. If the slopes are equal, we then got to go to that tiebreaker, which is the y-intercept. If the y-intercepts are also equal, then we know there's infinite amount of solutions. Um, 
so that these lines coincide. And if the y-intercepts are different, then there is no solutions, so they're parallel. So again, you want to maybe, uh, the first couple times you work through these examples, you can use that flowchart to help you out. It's not that uh, not that tough, so you, you might not even need this flowchart, but it's there if you need it, or if you'd like it, sorry. All right, so let's look at an example. Uh, it says determine the number of solutions. So if it says something like that, really what they're wondering is what type of linear system do I have? Do I have the intersecting type, parallel type, or the coinciding type? So to determine that, remember, we're not actually going to solve. We're going to have to go into a different procedure where we're just trying to see what type of system it is. Um, so what we want to do, I'm going to number these. And I want to determine what the slope and the y-intercept are. And once I have those values, I can compare them and then make my call on the system. So x plus y equals 3. Subtract x, subtract x y equals negative x plus 3. So I know my slope is negative 1. I know my y-intercept is 3. All right. Second equation, negative 2x minus y equals negative 2. Add 2x. Add 2x. Negative y equals 2x um, minus 2 divided by negative 1. y equals negative 2x plus 2. So I know my slope is negative 2. I know my y-intercept is positive 2. So the first thing you want to check out is the slopes. If the slopes are different, we know we have intersecting lines. I have different slopes. So right away, this means therefore, those triang the triangular dots means therefore, um, one solution because I know we have intersecting lines. So determining which type of linear system you have, linear system you have, is pretty easy. Uh, put it in a slope intercept form, determine that M and the B, and then compare. Look at another one. Oh, let's switch back to green and uh, maybe I guess some rider pride. I don't know, I just felt like using green today. So 4x plus 6y equals negative 10. Again, I'm going to isolate the y, so i got to isolate the 6y first. Divide by 6, divide by 6, divide by 6. y equals, uh, really that's going to reduce to negative 2 over 3x. And then this one's going to also reduce to 5 over 3. So my slope is negative 2 over 3, my y-intercept, and I can put like slope of 1, line 1, um, y-intercept of line 1, that little subscript, the small number. I can put a 1 down because this is the first line I'm working with. Uh, that would be negative 5 over 3. Okay, the second line. Add 2x, add 2x. Negative 3y equals 2x plus 5. Divide by negative 3. y equals negative 2 over 3x minus 5 over 3. Hey, that looks familiar. So m2, slope of line 2, is equal to negative 2 over 3. And the y-intercept of line 2 is negative 5 over 3. So again, we want to consider the slopes first. So these slopes are equal. M1 equals M2. Let's check out, I use a different color. Let's check out the y-intercepts. They are also equal. B1 equals B2. So when those are equal to each other, what do we know? We know we have coinciding lines that really, they're just, uh, sorry, I just stopped to think how to spell coinciding. Um, we know they're really this, they're occupying the same space. So you're going to have, say, this red line, and then now here is this blue line that's really in the same spot. Okay, they have the same slope, same y-intercept. Um, so we know they're, we know it's coinciding. So therefore, infinite solutions. Because remember, the real question is how many solutions. Also, 
over time doing these videos, I realized I make the sound a lot. I, I don't know why I make this sound, but I do. So sorry about that. It annoyed even myself when I listened to my, you know, a five minute video, I got annoyed by myself. I can only imagine how you're feeling. I'll try not to make it anymore. Third one. Um, you likely have it down, but I thought there's three types. I might as well show you one of each type. Now I'm self-conscious about my noise. I'm trying not to make any extra noise. So I'm trying to get the into Y equals MX plus B form. Just taking my time. Enjoying the ride. Y equals, that'll be one half X uh, plus one fourth. So the slope of the first line is one half. The Y intercept of the first line is one fourth. Okay, let's check the characteristics of this second one. 3x minus 6y equals 2. Move that 3x. Divide by negative 6. One half x plus one third. Okay, so then the slope of line two will be one half, and the y intercept of the second one will be one third. We always begin at the slopes, so compare our slopes. Slope of the first line is equal to the slope of the second line. Check out our y intercepts, they are different. So when you have the same slope but different y intercepts, that means we have parallel lines. Okay, and then therefore, based on all this information, I know um, I have parallel lines, which is zero solutions. All right, so that's what each type would look like in a question like this. Second example, given the equation, negative 6x plus y equals 3, write another linear equation so the system has exactly one solution. All right, so how to tackle this? Well, remember that um, exactly one solution means that we must have intersecting lines. So if I think about the characteristics of these lines, I got to make sure that the second new equation I make has a different slope than the first one and a different y-intercept. Actually, the y-intercept part uh, doesn't matter. If you can't have the same y-intercept, that doesn't matter as much because uh, usually it won't have the same y-intercept, but it can. Uh, now I feel like I want to clarify that with a picture. So here's one line here's another line and let's pretend I drew that a little bit better that would have the same y-intercept um, and you can see in my solution chart that I drew you uh, I never mentioned the y-intercept when you had uh, different slopes because it doesn't really matter uh, on my first chart I may have wrote that down and it's not like it's totally wrong it's it, that's correct in some cases but um, overall we really shouldn't make that statement so to recap for parallel lines uh, sorry, intersecting lines. We know that the slopes will just be equal and we won't even consider the y-intercept. Um, really, it's just the slope that's going to make that determination for us. Okay, so let's get back to this actual question. So my first equation is here. Like I was saying, I got to know what the y and the uh, slope, sorry, what the y-intercept and the slope are. So I'm putting it into y equals mx plus b. Okay, so my slope is 6. My y-intercept is 3. So I get to make up another equation myself, and I want to make sure it's intersecting. So as long as I come up with um, a different slope, uh, it does, it, it'll does it take care of itself. So I can just say, okay, well, y equals uh, negative 3x. And then the y-intercept doesn't matter, so I'm just going to write plus 2. But this equation would result in intersecting lines, meaning just one solution. Now, as we move forward here, um, we got to remember this part, and it'll speed us up a little bit. So our slope is 6, our y-intercept is 3. In B, we have the same question, but now I, uh, I want no solutions to occur. So remember, um, out of my equation there, my y-intercept was 6, my slope-intercept was 3. So that's this first given equation. So now I'm going to come up with another equation. 
um, to ensure that we have no solution. So if there's no solution, that means you have parallel lines. So for that case, for parallel, remember that our slopes are gonna be equal, but our y-intercepts will not be equal. So I'd say y equals 6x, so I have a parallel slope, and then now just anything but plus 3, so I'll say minus 2. That would result in no solution. So there's lots of possible answers here. It's more or less you just have to avoid the one uh, or two things. Third and final one. Again, we got to remember our slope and our y-intercept from this first given equation. The slope was 6, y-intercept was 3, and I found that in A. And now infinite solutions. So infinite solutions means they coincide. If they coincide, remember our slopes are equal and our y-intercepts are also equal. So really, I'm just going to rewrite what I had. So y equals 6x plus 3. Now, if you wanted to write it with the x and the y on the same side called standard form, you can. If you wanted to write it in general form, which is you put all three things on the same side, you can. But I just left it in slope point or sorry, slope intercept form because that is the easiest. And it doesn't matter how you'd present that equation in the system. So just leave it in this form. If you really feel like getting creative or fancy and you want to put it in a different form, you can, but that's just additional work. You don't need to do it. All right, so I hope that helped everybody. If you have any questions, make sure you talk to your teacher or get in contact with me. Have a great night.